Hey everyone, welcome back to Stiff Upper Lens. I'm Scott and today I'm gonna to talk to you about whether you really need to use a dedicated camera for YouTube or whether you could probably just use your smartphone. So it's 2018 and smartphones can shoot 4K. In fact, the iPhone 10 can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. That means that 4K slow motion on a phone is now perfectly usable and the quality of it is excellent as well, particularly in good light. So what I'm doing here just as an example is filming this with my camera and with my smartphone above. Uh, my camera is the Sony a6300 shooting in 4K and I have the Google Pixel, which is the original one, not version two, again, shooting in 4K and it's mounted just above the camera. Hopefully this will give you somewhat of a comparison between the quality of the two. Um, I have a large softbox behind, which I will take a shot of after. Obviously I can't do the shot at the moment because I physically am using my phone. So this should be able to tell you the difference. Of course, the phone is gonna be framed slightly higher, so apologies, I can't get these scenes exactly the same. But that's somewhat one thing you have to bear in mind is of course, if you have a camera and a zoom lens, you can adjust the field of view fairly easily. With a smartphone, it's not so easy. You could of course get something like the moment lens, uh, which are like attachable lenses for your phone, but again, they're fixed, they're not zooms. I've not really seen any particularly decent zoom systems for a smartphone. Of course, the iPhones do allow you to zoom somewhat by pinching uh, and using the two different camera systems. That's probably your best bet, but again, adjusting those during footage is gonna make them very, very shaky. Now, I'm deliberately filming this at f2.8 to show the difference in the depth of field that you can get when filming with a camera with a reasonably large sensor. This is the Sony a6300. It has an APS-C size sensor, which is a 1.5 crop factor from a full frame sensor, a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. Whereas my smartphone being the Google Pixel, uh, when taking photos, has a crop factor of around about six times. Uh, from a full frame camera and when you shoot in 4K it crops in even more. So that's something you have to consider in terms of your field of view. However, when you are trying to blur the background, the bigger the sensor, the easier it is. You can see the background of my scene here is diffused, uh, whereas it pretty much isn't at all on the Google Pixel. I've actually tried to shoot this video before and made a few adjustments and the footage is pretty much all one focal plane. In terms of the depth of field point, if you remember that currently on smartphones, you can use something called portrait mode. It's particularly prominent in the new Google Pixel and in the iPhones. I firmly believe that this technology will get stronger in smartphones and will come to video. So you may be able to create a shallow depth of field for your videos in the future anyway. Something else you need to consider when you're filming with your smartphone is that it will get particularly hot when filming, particularly filming in 4K and over long periods of time. Uh, your phone storage may be liable to be filled up quite quickly. It's gonna kill your battery life and even if you've got that charger in there, particularly if you're using like a skin on your phone and that, it's really gonna keep the heat in there and it could overheat your phone. It's not necessarily gonna cause any lasting damage but it could cause your phone to lag out and really spend a long time processing that file. So that's just something to bear in mind. And in terms of audio accessories, it's a lot easier on these modern cameras which all still have audio jacks, they have audio inputs and some cameras have headphone jacks as well. We're seeing the death of the headphone jack in smartphones. There was a really good device called the Rode Video Micro, which plugged into your headphone jack in your phone and allowed you to have a good quality mic. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. You may be able to use it. I've never actually seen anyone try doing it with one of the, perhaps the lightning to headphone jack adjustments, but then the mic hasn't really got anywhere to fix to on the phone. It's a bit of a complicated setup with a camera. Of course, you can either use like a lav mic. Uh, this is the Rode Wireless Filmmakers Kit, so it's a slightly different setup. Um, in terms of the internal audio of both devices, to be honest, they're probably both as bad as each other. Uh, you probably get away with the phone a little bit better for vlogging because it's the microphone is made to pick up sounds of a voice quite close to it, uh, but it's still not gonna be ideal. Moving on to the super positives for the smartphone though is the device that you're shooting on, you can potentially edit on and export all from the same device. If you're doing it maybe from an iPad as well, that's even more powerful, you can just get things going to go. 
you can live stream phenomenally easily from a smartphone. It literally takes two or three clicks to either go on Facebook or YouTube Live. To rig this A6300 up to a live stream, I'm gonna need a capture card, software on my PC, a very powerful PC. So if you've already got a smartphone for live streams, even if you have a camera, your smartphone's probably gonna be a better option for your live streaming. And of course, if you just create content on your phone, you don't really even edit it, you can just publish it straight to YouTube from your phone, which is great. Of course, this video I'm gonna to have to import in, put into Final Cut Pro 10, and then edit both of the both of the videos. It's, it, it's just, it's a lot more work. So it depends on the trade-off. If your content is engaging and entertaining, the production quality is not really paramount. Regardless, it's nicer to have good quality equipment, and I happen to have this quality equipment. But of course, if you've got sharpness issues at 4K, you can downscale that footage to 1080p, and it'll probably look really nice and sharp. The final point is really, if you don't have the budget for the camera, then you really should just use what you have. Most of us already have smartphones. Even ones from a couple of years ago shoot really great 1080p video. 1080p is, is fine for YouTube. So you may be better off making use of what you actually have. If you're somebody that wants to make content, there's a message you feel you need to get out to the world. Maybe you wanna talk about hair, makeup, you wanna talk about the latest Canon cameras, you wanna talk about smartphones, you know, tech, tech bloggers are huge these days. You've got the equipment, just go out and start making content and perhaps as, as your channel grows, you're gonna be able to make those videos and make the transition into the better cameras. You know, trust me, I'd love to be like Linus Tech Tips and MKVHD with their 8K RED cameras and editing on iMac Pros and stuff, but I'm nowhere near that level. So it, it, it's ifs and buts and I, I use my camera for videoing weddings and videoing various other corporate videos as well. So I have the equipment already. It's not something I need to additionally invest in. So hopefully you've been able to see a comparison between the video footage of the two cameras. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have a YouTube video and you solely use your smartphone, please do link it down below. I'd love to see that and I'm sure everyone else would be like to see that as well. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in any other content such as photography, videography, um, I do some Hackintosh videos as well and I'm going to try and move more into the smartphone arena as well. Do click on that like button and hit the subscribe as well. I'd love to be seeing you in future videos. That's all from me on this one and we'll catch up on the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.